Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we're gonna to be talking about animal spirit guides, what they are and how you can find your own. Now, the topic of this discussion today was inspired by a post that I made recently on my Instagram. Basically, I moved to New Orleans, I've been decorating my new space and waiting for new furniture to come in, but in the meantime, I felt myself kind of gravitating towards certain objects that really were connecting me to my personal animal spirit guide. For example, the cow. I got not a cow head, not an actual cow head, but a statue, like a replica of an actual cow head, and that's in the kitchen, and then I also have these faux cow hide seats that I have in the kitchen because the cow has always been my animal spirit guide since day one, since I can remember. What exactly is an animal spirit guide? Well, an animal spirit guide is a guide in the form of an animal that comes to you in this life whether it be temporary or permanent, that is there to teach you, to guide you, to empower you, and then ultimately to heal you. Animals, just like plants, have energies connected to them. There is much to be gained from them by allowing them to just be who they are, whatever they are, doing what they do best. So the lessons that the shamans learned from these animals were, were then able to be passed from generation to generation. And now here we are today. The next question I think that you guys want to know is how do you find your animal totem? And there's three main ways for you to connect with your personal animal totem or your animal spirit guide. The first one is to do the work yourself. This is the one that I recommend the most. Usually to do this, this is through a guided meditation. And one of my favorite guided meditations, you kind of visualize yourself walking through the woods or walking through an environment. and you know, you're going through this rainbow path until finally you go to this pure white light. And within this white light, within this white space that's coming from this space of ultimate love and ultimate healing, unconditional love and healing, you can call in your animal guide. You can call in your animal spirit. And then just watch and wait to see what comes through. Now the first time I did this, the skunk came through and I was so disappointed, but at that time, it made a lot of sense for me at that moment in my life. And that the skunk has stayed with me time and time and time again, even to this day. Now, for those of you guys who are like, oh my God, the skunk, Jess, you're so cute, you're so this, you're so this, why would the skunk be your animal totem? Well, it really made a lot of sense because the skunk is actually one of the most defensive and protective of the entire animal kingdom without actually having to exert physical force. It's more about when you see the animal, there's a healthy level of respect, and with that respect comes protection without the skunk even having to lift a finger. And at that moment in my time in my life, it actually made a lot of sense for what it was that I was going through. Not only was I vegetarian and then eventually vegan, but I wouldn't have harmed a fly. But there was a lot of respect that was building around me because I was not passive, but I just had this presence about me and I was very much focused on my spiritual self, my spiritual path, and I was very clear with people as far as what my expectations were, what I wanted, what I didn't want, what I would allow into my life, what I wouldn't allow into my life. So no one really took advantage of me in that way, even though I could have been totally 100% taken advantage of in the environment that I was in at that time. So the skunk, watching a skunk and observing his behavior taught me a lot about myself and was symbolic of what it was that I was going through in my life at that time and how I should proceed as I move forward. Also, the skunk is the merging and the perfect epitome of the polarities of black and white, of the shadow sides of ourselves and the light sides of ourselves merged into one animal because that, of course, is the skunk's, you know, what he wears, that's the outfit that he wears, that's how he comes into this world, white and black. And again, that was the epitome of me and how I've always been, being very comfortable with the ship, with both my dark, darker sides and my light sides and then learning how to work with both of them. So again, back to how I found out what my animal totem was in that moment. One of my animal totems was through a intentional guided meditation where I was with a group and all of us together had entered into this meditative state and it was guided by the group leader at the time and we 
went through the process together and at the very end of the guided meditation we all opened our eyes and we shared what animals came through and that was one of them. Now the reason why I recommend that you do the work yourself is because this is going to help you to strengthen your ability to meditate, your ability to work with your own spirit guides without having to rely on someone else to translate those messages for you. It's going to strengthen your intuition and ultimately your gifts. And I also think that from working with the spirit realm in general, they really appreciate the fact that you're trying to do the work yourself versus in, it just seems in today's day, today's day and age, everyone's looking for quick, fast, easy results. And when you're doing spiritual work, it's simply not meant to look like that. It's not meant to be like that. It's like any relationship. It can't be forced. It has to be developed over time and you need to invest your energy and your effort into it. It needs to be something that it is that you want to develop and it is something that you should develop. That being said, the next way of connecting with your spirit, your animal spirit guide is to go to someone else and have them do the meditation for you. Now, again, a lot of people really prefer to ask someone else to tell them what their spirit guide is and they will do the work and find out for you through their own meditation. This is not something that I recommend simply because I feel like, again, I'm a person who believes that you should develop the relationship with, with your guides because they want to connect with you. Ultimately, they want to connect with you. You want to build the, the, the bond and this cord between you guys. It's so strong. It's almost like they pick up the phone here and you know, you're picking up the phone here and you guys can have this direct line of communication versus you having to go to an operator to go to here to go to here in order to connect with your your spirit guides your animal guides angels ancestors whatever so many people again want the quick and easy way them not practicing and them not developing their own gifts and talents and that that line of con um, communication and strengthening that ultimately it ends up being more detrimental than anything so just do the work yourself another way that your animal spirit guides will come and talk to you or approach you is you'll see them repetitive you'll see them in nature or you'll see symbols of them or you'll be drawn to it you just can't explain it for example one of my animal totems like I said in the beginning of the video is the cow now, I wasn't raised in an environment that had a lot of farm life, so I didn't pass by cows every day and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this animal you know, really resonates with me, it gravitates towards me, and I am learning from it. I just would see the image of the cow and I would just be like, oh my God, there's something about it that I just absolutely adore and I love, and I don't know why I love the cow so much, I don't know why, I just find it so stunning. I could just watch it for hours. Why do I love the cow so much? Why does this, and it's just like, that's one thing. It's not even the animal's hide, even though that's beautiful itself, but just the cow in its natural environment doing what it is that it does. Why do I love it so much? When you start feeling yourself kind of being called to things like that or noticing things or seeing things repeating, then that's, chances are that that is a part of your animal totem and maybe you should really take it seriously and start doing the research to find out why this animal is coming to me and then maybe even calling it into your meditation all by yourself. See, even as I'm saying this, the num number on the clock is 222. That's confirmation for anybody that needs to hear it, anybody that needs to see it. But again, it's unity. It's connecting with the spirit of your animal guide so that you can learn from it because it's trying to send you a signal. Now, that being said, I do have some resources that you guys can use in order to better understand your animal guides, your, your animal spirit guides, your quote unquote animal um, totem. You can call it whatever you want to. It's pretty much the same thing. Now, you guys know that Book recommendations are not something that I pass on lightly. In fact, I'm so much of a perfectionist that it's rare that you'll find me recommending a book. That being said, I feel that Stephen D. Farmer did a fantastic job with his Animal Spirit Guide book as far as what he says is identifying, understanding your power animals and animal spirit helpers. For example, the chipmunk, you can just read about it the dolphin, the ibis, the octopus. I mean, it goes so deep into all of the animals within the, that I, I feel that you can pretty much come across. You can always do a quick uh, search on Google in order to see what animals, um, what other people are saying with their, from their research, from their experience with working with animal spirit and, and animal guides. 
but also outside of looking for the messages, I really think that you should do the research as far as what that animal's life looks like in its natural environment because that will inspire intuitive messages for you that you need to receive that other people may not have picked up on even people like Stephen D Farmer the the book that it is that I just recommended or uh, other people who have done the work or even myself because your intuition is going to guide you to be like pay attention to this you know the skunk burrows here why is the skunk burrowing why does the skunk need to you know spend so much time by himself why is he black and white what are the things that you notice about him why is he not you know feeling the need to bare his teeth when you know when it's just like animals can see and be like oh I don't want to fuck with a skunk because if I mess with a skunk I'm gonna get sprayed why why how does that make you feel and really dive into that and explore that outside of what the internet and what books are telling you again this is a part of you doing the work all by yourself but I highly recommend it another thing that I recommend is Stephen Farmer's um, messaging messages from your animal spirit guides Oracle deck I really liked this you know um deck because it's just like let's say outside of you know what has come to you through meditation sometimes it's nice to just shuffle from the deck and then pull the card and see what shows up as far as what animal spirit can tell you in that moment so that's one way that you can benefit from it and one last thing that i want to talk about with the animal spirit guides and is are they temporary or are they permanent? Now, there are animal totems that will stick with you for your entire life. For me, that is the honeybee, the cow, and the skunk. The cow has always connected with me when it comes to my home life, my personal life, and my domestic life. The skunk has always connected with me when it came to my sense of protection and also my magic. And then the bee has always resonated with me when it came to my work and Bahati life. In fact, I wear the bee two times around my neck. You can't really tell right now because they're both twisted up and knotted up right now. But one was given to me as a gift and one was um, purchased. One was a custom gift from a friend, Kat from Stone Cooper. She's amazing. She does, my, she does my custom jewelry. But anyways, so those spirit guides will stay with me for my entire life as far as I can tell because they just have so far. I've, 31 now and they've been with me for over 10 15 years now so i just can imagine them staying with me as we move forward but again we as human beings we tend to evolve but i hope they stay with me because i love their messages and they're like family to me at this point but there are temporary spirit guides and you'll see that when you're working with the oracle or you'll see that while you're out and about well maybe where maybe you're out walking and you see a hawk or you see an eagle or just being in new orleans you see a crow it lands on you know the banister when you wake up in the morning new orleans is filled with crows or maybe even something like the beat the butterfly or whatever you just want to be aware of what it is that is making itself known to you in that moment especially if it repeats or especially if it's just kind of striking to you in that moment it's most likely the spirit of that animal that wants to share a message with you and it's up to you to decide what it is that you're going to do with that and of course i recommend that you research by using books and resources like the internet or this book which i recommend and i'll link it down below or by doing your own research and study of that animal within its life what its life looks like what it what food it eats does it mate for life does it hibernate does it travel does it migrate what are the aspects what is it what does its living environment look like what does it prefer what are its preferences and what does that mean for you the other thing that i highly recommend is that you keep track of it in a journal which i think i talked about in a video recent about keeping things simple like top five mistakes that witches make so go ahead and check that out but in the meantime i really want to hear what spirit guides you guys are resonating with are they with you for life or are they temporary what guides are coming through for you recently um, and leave those down in the comments because I'm curious. I love the topic of animal um, guides and spirit guides. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to jump on this. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Talk soon. Bye.